um, for our next talk. All right, we have um, Antoine Bossard from Graduate School of Science, Kanagawa University in Japan. And he's going to tell us about the fun he's had typesetting <clears throat> a book in both English and Japanese and all of the problems that he had to face in order to do it. Okay. Yeah. So thanks, Antoine. It's over to you. Um, all right. Thank you. So I will share my screen. Yeah. All right. So hello, everyone. So I would like to report today on my recent work, or let's say the last few years I've been working on uh, textbooks for my students, uh, computer science students. And uh, because as kindly introduced uh, by uh, Professor Moore, I am working in Japan. So I have to uh, always be aware of uh, this particularity uh, that my students, they may not be so, let's say, accustomed to using English. So it's important when I use English for my lectures, uh, even if I use only a little, little bit of English, I have to uh, always kind of additionally give uh, the corresponding Japanese information, supporting information in Japanese. That's really, really important. So before, so yeah, my talk today has uh, written here on this first page. Uh, well, as you may know, and I think uh, the previous talk by Jennifer was uh, kind of uh, dealing with uh, similar issues uh, regarding the um, multilingual uh, typesetting. Uh, of course, we have font issues and so on, but uh, there are a lot of, uh, let's say, technical issues when you want to uh, realize such kind of bilingual textbook, especially when you consider uh, different writing systems, for example, English, so using mostly Latin letters, let's say Latin letters and Japanese, which is a completely different uh, writing system. So I think it's a technically demanding scenario. So that's why I decided to do this presentation because I think it's uh, interesting to, um, for me to tell about uh, the issues they encountered and how I managed to resolve them. So just as a, let's say, to show you uh, the textbook I, so I have changed my screen sharing now, and this is the textbook that I have uh, written uh, over the past uh, several years, right? So this is a textbook on functional programming for my students uh, of this lecture. And uh, yeah, so I was able to really complete and uh, create a rather nice, uh, the typesetting was nice. Of course, uh, using LaTeX, always nice, but yeah. So concrete re uh, result, result, a concrete result for this project. All right, so. All right, so a few background facts may be obvious. Proficiency in English, uh, especially by undergrad students, is uh, unfortunately not uh, always uh, acquired uh, in in maybe most countries. I, I can say numerous countries, but maybe that's the case in almost all non non English uh, speaking countries. So, uh, but at the same time, of course, uh, it's very important for. Uh, future, the future of the students to be good at English, or at least to understand and be able to read and write a little bit of English. And especially, let's say, 
technical English because, well, my specialty is computer science. So my students also, they will graduate in this field. So I try to, yeah, to motivate them and to show them why it's important and how they can get better at technical English, English for computer science and so on. And uh, yeah, so yeah, the earlier, the earlier, the better for students to acknowledge this. And uh, so one, of course, there are several methods to try to achieve this. But uh, I thought in one of my lectures, I would try to rely on a bilingual textbook and see how, how my students, they react, their, their, yeah, what is their reaction for, regarding this pedagogical material. So in this LaTeX talk, uh, I, of course, I consider the technically demanding English Japanese scenario. And more precisely, English is the language of the main text. Uh, and, and supporting notes, additional information would, will be given or is given in Japanese. So uh, in the, of course, in the paper I've written for Tugboat, I have given a lot of details. And uh, I think it's better to give more generic names. So the main text, I call it the major language and the supporting language for supporting text is, I call it the minor language. So, okay, when it comes to technical considerations for the realization of such a textbook with LaTeX, of course, several challenges arise, starting with the manipulation of distinct writing systems and this distinct typography. Yeah, I, uh, two years ago, I was uh, very happy to be able to attend the TUG conference in Palo Alto. Uh, I remember uh, several talks and also Jennifer talk on the letter E, I remember. And uh, my talk two years ago was specifically focused on the typography for Japanese intake, how to do it simply without using fancy or very large packages or without using the specific distributions for Japanese. So it was uh, my previous talk. And, and this, this year, um, in continuation of this, I mean, I will reuse what I've done previously for Japanese typography and how to use it for bilingual typesetting of a textbook. Yeah, so writing system typography is different. So the objective, of this work is to give LaTeX techniques and guidelines to support the addition of such bilingual material while remaining as flexible as possible. So that's why I use the standard book class and uh, I try to avoid redefining standard macros and commands uh, to retain as much compatibility as possible. So I think this is a rather long, um, how should I say, the, the article I wrote for Tugboat is uh, de very detailed and maybe very long. So I cannot, I don't want to give too much details in the presentation because it would be not really interesting for attendees. Uh, but I have addressed maybe three main topics. So first we consider the type textual considerations. Uh, we then address page layout issues and uh, then maybe the most tricky, the trickiest issue is the customization topic. For example, for page headers and a little bit of PDF specific uh, features as well. So of course, I think that's the beauty of tech and LaTeX. You can do almost everything you want, but of course, as soon as you want to do a bit, uh, let's say more, special stuff you have you, the beauty of tech is that you can do it but of course uh, it uh, requires some technical knowledge and uh, or if you don't have the knowledge there, then you have to spend uh, a significant amount of time searching for the information you want so that was my case so i spent a lot of time searching for tech uh, tech techniques and such, such kind of stuff 
So especially for the customization. So that I will touch this a little bit inside uh, during this, this presentation. So first type considerations, uh, maybe it's obvious, but uh, to say that, but because we consider bilingual and especially we consider different writing systems, so different encodings usually uh, if we don't rely on Unicode. So it's much easier to directly use the uni universal encoding uh, Unicode. So it means uh, using, for example, Xilatec or Lua, Lua Latec. The, so I use the font spec package to select uh, the Japanese font. The English font is, is no problem. Uh, I use the set main font command of font spec and that's it. Now for the Japanese text, I need a special font. Uh, so I use the font spec command new font family to declare uh, a Japanese font. So I, I give I name it uh, backslash uh, u. Um, maybe if some of you are not aware of this, I, when you use a Japanese system, the the backslash character is displayed as the yen mark. So don't don't be uh, I don't know as, astonished or surprised. This is just uh, how Japanese systems are. Uh, of course, I could choose a special font, but that's how it is on my system now. So, all right, so I just want to emphasize that uh, sometimes, I mean, unlike in English or maybe Roman Latin font, uh, you have to manually declare uh, a bold font. Ah, yeah, I remember why, because if you, load a font with the this command new font family you can give the font name the font file name or you can give directly the font name not the file name the font name but i don't know why the japanese font name so included japanese characters and but i was not able to load the this font by using the font name directly so i had to resort to the file name instead which means that if I want to use the bold variation of this font, I have to declare manually the, the bold font as well. So because you see the file name is different for the bold font. There is a B here, right, bold. Here it's regular, right? So that's uh, not difficult stuff, but takes some time to figure out if you, you're not familiar with this kind of thing. But really, the font spec package is really, really great. You can do, you can customize and load a load, lot of things. And I really think the font spec package is very helpful when you do such kind of bilingual or multilingual work. All right. So the next issue is the page layout. Page layout, well, when editing a bilingual material, it is likely that a special page layout would be requested. For example, uh, yeah, uh, by, for example, the editor, the publisher. For instance, in the case of English Japanese edition, it is very frequent that publishers uh, request uh, Japanese formats. So this is what means GIS, right? Japanese industrial standard. So. Of course, I think you are all aware that we frequently use the A4 paper format or the American letter format. But for example, in Japan, we have uh, additional other kind, of, let's say, yeah, uh, other formats and they are called the GIS formats. So for example, GIS B5 is kind of close to the uh, ISO B5, but not, not exactly the same. And uh, LaTeX uh, does not support by default uh, GIS, uh, the Japanese formats. I think that's obvious. But uh, if we rely on the geometry package, uh, the support of such paper formats is much uh, more extended. Um, yeah, it's much larger. So yeah, by using the geometry package, it's easy to, to 
set to set up the the paper format like this. Another, I think, key aspect of bilingual edition is the usage of margin notes, and I think that's another really uh, great advantage of of LaTeX, the take system, is that we can reuse margin margin notes. I don't think we can do this with other uh, like Word, Microsoft Word, and, and so, so, such kind of software. So it is very variable to the variable to the reader to have margin notes written in the minor language, so here in Japanese, to provide supporting information to the main text written in the major language in English. So concretely, in my case, I use margin notes for two main purposes. First, to give the translation of technical terms. So if you remember, I said my textbook is focused on functional programming. So for example, the, the technical terms such as a function, what is a function? Uh, so just translation, word translation. And the other purpose of margin notes was to provide a little bit longer supporting text information. For example, when in the main text, there is a an very an essential discussion, very important discussion, then it's very interesting for students to have the, uh, let's say the key ideas written in a easy to read, a short sentence, short Japanese sentence, not, not just a keyword translation, short Japanese sentence when especially when um, dealing with essential, essential ideas in the, in the main text. Okay, so for convenience, uh, for the sake of convenience, I have declared a macro like this, margin note macro, which starts a margin par, you see, very uh, standard margin par. The only thing is that I, uh, typeset it a slightly smaller than the main text, and I used a uh, hanging, uh, hanging setting, uh, so that yeah, when there because in, on some pages there are several Japanese texts in the margin. It's kind of getting continuous in the margin. So in order to enhance the readability of the margin information, margin text. I think it's much better to have some indentation uh, so that it's easy to identify, okay, this is one margin node, this is the second margin node, this is the third margin node. We can easily cut uh, the, the margin nodes, which is why I don't in indent the, the first line, yeah. So uh, when I want to add a margin node, it's very simple, I guess. I use the command margin node and I select the Japanese font, of course, and then include some Japanese text. Here I've written in English, but please uh, imagine Japanese text here. So page layout issues. Um, yeah, because I kind of heavily rely on the margin, I have to, yeah, using the geometry package, as I said previously, a special paper for Japan, I can select the margin power size. And um, I include, I use this setting, include margin power, um, because I want that my header text, for example, on the page, page headers, right? There is some text in the header. So I want that the header goes over, includes, right? Goes over the, the margin, because the margin really is a part, is, is really, uh, yeah, part of the, of the of the text, the main yeah the text. So I want the header to include it. But however, the margin is not desirable on some pages. For example, the title page or in the bibliography. I, I don't need a margin on such kind of special places. So I think the geometry package has included the geometry switch feature. Well, first you create, declare a new geometry, and then you can easily switch between geometries. I think this feature is not, not very old from the geometry package, but in this work, uh, it was very convenient for me. So you see here, I declare a new geometry, 
which includes the margin uh, part. But uh, when I want to de de deactivate, really disable the, the margin because I don't need it. For example, in the bibliography on the title page, there is the, this setting. So sample output, we have, you see on the left-hand side here, the title page, no margin, right? Which means that the title text is correctly uh, aligned in the center, horizontal center of the page. All right. The second uh, in the middle, the page in the middle here, this is a chapter page, right? The first page of a chapter. So you can see that there is a major text here and the minor text in Japanese has been included here in the margin, all right? And in the bibliography example, you see again that the margin has been disabled using the geometry switching feature of the geometry package. All right, now it's getting a bit more tricky and yeah, getting, it, it was a long, it took much time for me to figure out how to do what I wanted to do. For example, okay, page headers, let's focus on page headers. So first I rely on the title PS uh, package, which is very uh, convenient to deal with such kind of things. I have not relied on the fancy header package because uh, I, think the title PS package also provide, you know, the title talk for the table of content. And uh, what was the other one? Title PS, title talk, and uh, title sec, I think the, the, the other the other one. Well, I think, yeah, it was better to be homogeneous. Otherwise there, there are some income, yeah, um, compatibility problems if I want to use fancy header package and title talk or something like this. All right, so what I wanted to do is to add a horizontal rule below headers. This is very common practice in editing to, to kind of, yeah, add a, a horizontal rule below the headers. And uh, that's uh, uh, something that, of course, the title PS is aware of. So title PS gives the possibility to add very easily a, a rule but the problem is that now there is a margin. As I've explained, I'm using a vertical margin. Yeah, the margin on, on the right-hand side. And I want that my header, well, I have already customized my header so that the text goes above the margin, but the rule also needs to, of course, go above the margin. And that's not, uh, let's say, that's a little bit tricky to do because without, by default, it does not include the margin. The rule does not go over the margin by default. So I had to rely on title PS features to uh, let's say enlarge the rule. And for that, the package provides the wide, widen head uh, command. So, okay, I had to calculate in advance, how much should I enlarge? I had to calculate the dimension, right? Uh, regarding the rule uh, and, and uh, enlargement. So for that, I create a new length and uh, which is initialized with the margin power width, of course. And in addition, I add to this initial value, the margin power separation, the dimension, the value, right? The separation, this is the amount of space between the margin and the main text. So then my layout switching commands, they are declared uh, like, like this. As I said before, I have the, uh, this is to uh, create the geometry. Um, no, to switch the geometry. Well, it's not very important, but I, so here I don't have any, this is the no margin layout. So I use the geometry without any margin uh, the zero margin. And in this case, the head is not extended. But when there is a margin layout, that is for most of the book, actually, most of the book, 
I have to restore the geometry, which means I have to activate the margin bar, activate the margin bar, and enlarge the rule. So for that, I just reused what I have calculated in advance. Sorry, this header extension value here is included in the widen head parameters. All right. And next, it's getting even more complicated. Uh, chapter pages and marks, because I want that my chapter pages, they include the English title, but also I want the Japanese title. So to do that, I rely on the, let's say, uh, sister package uh, title sec, and um, I create a new command, my chapter subtitle, which will be used to, let's say, store the Japanese text Japanese subtitle, right? And uh, the chapter page is customized with the title set command, title format. So I don't, I don't need to go through all the details here. So just that uh, after the main English chapter title, you can see that I include the subtitle here, right? Now, of course, the let's say tricky point is to I have to accordingly set this value, right? The my chapter subtitle, it's a macro. So I have to redefine the macro each time the chapter subtitle changes. So that's, I think that's a, let's say common way to do it, but it's not very easy, especially in the Japanese English uh, case. So the chapter page style itself remains Simple. I don't need to detail it too much. And the page style of the other pages include, as I said, a ruled header. And now, okay, uh, marks are used to retrieve the title in the major language because the rule, sorry, the, the header, the content of the header, if you know a little bit of text, you, you know that it's by default the same as the chapter title, right? The chapter title text is reused, usually is, uh, is put in uppercase and is reused as is in the header text. But uh, that's a bit problematic for me because, um, because of the way I, I treat my chapters, I, I declare my chapter titles. So, the way to do it is to, to use marks. Marks is a uh, difficult uh, aspect of tech. Uh, so I don't think, anyway, I don't have too much time. So I, I don't need to say too much about it. But marks, they are used to, um, marks are updated. If I don't say, if I'm not mistaken, marks are, are updated as the document is, let's say, compiled or processed by tech. So that marks they hold the newest or let's say the current title, chapter title or section title. That, that's how marks, marks uh, work. So if I re reuse marks in my header definition here, then I can get up to date, uh, let's say current uh, text information. But usually you don't have to do this, right? It's auto automatic. But because my titles, they are bilingual and such kind of things, I have to do it myself. And, and it's a bit tricky because there are, there are several marks. There are marks at the top of the page, at the bottom of the page, and there are uh, user-defined marks called short marks. So it's, it's a very, I think it's very, it, that, that's the thing that I think that took me most, most, most time. Uh, so as I, as I record here, manually using Mart is complex. And maybe I think a lot of people here uh, today are very much better tech, tech people than I am. And they would say, okay, you can just uh, you use a command like this, right? You declare your chapter like this with the English title, let's say a line break and uh, English, sub uh, sorry, Japanese subtitle. And then you just use the chapter mark, chapter mark latex command to set manually the mark. And you don't need to, 
to use the difficult uh, extra marks given by title PS package, you, you can just keep stay stick with the default macro. Yeah, okay, that's one possibility. But if I do that, uh, this would only work as far as I understand and as far as I tried is only work in the case of chapters directly created with the chapter command. And it means that special chapters like the table of contents, the bibliography, well, in other words, automatically generated chapters, that would not work. That would not work. So that's annoying. So that's why I rely on such kind of advanced, uh, uh, let's say advanced methods to set the marks myself. So you see, I redefined a new chapter command to create a chapter inside which I set the English title and I set the Japanese subtitle and uh, I set uh, my, I create a, yeah, sh sh short mark. I create, I set the mark myself in Japanese yeah, with the, uh, no, sorry, it's in English, but it's okay. Uh, you see, after creating a new chapter, I use short mark to set the mark myself with the, my user defined mark. That's important to use a user defined mark because as I said, for automatically generated chapters, that's, that's essential, that's critical. Otherwise it won't, it won't do it. So, okay, so enough talking about such kind of technical stuff. Let's just have a look at the result. Uh, again, this is really sample, sample text. So here I have a chapter page. So you can see I have the main, main uh, in English, the chapter title in English and followed by, sorry, it's very small, but followed by the Japanese subtitle. And then again, I have my margins. Now a regular page of the book. So you see the margin and you can see the, the header. You can see the header has a nice horizontal rule which extends above the margin as I wanted to do. And also the, the header text is only the English text. And it also goes of course over the margin. And you can see that the automatically generated uh, chapters such as the bibliography by using user defined marks and title PS chapter uh, customization features. I was able to add a subtitle in Japanese to the bibliography. No margin on this page as I explained before. And of course, as well, and that was also a bit difficult. I had I have the same header with the rule and uh, only the English in the header. So that only to, to do, well, to do that, it is uh, a lot of work. And uh, of course, there is the table of contents that could be uh, presented next, but I don't, it's not, not too difficult. The only thing is because I want in the table of contents to have bilingual entries, English and Japanese, well, the only modification is here when I create the, chapter, I just changed, I just changed this um, uh, command by using a short, short title, a short title uh, argument here with uh, the main uh, English and uh, a line break and Japanese uh, sub, sub, uh, subtitle. Yeah. Um, Okay, so, okay, and that's almost finished for my talk, but well, because, uh, yeah, because I had uh, several dozens of students to, inside this lecture, taking this lecture, I thought, okay, I would, it would be good to gather some feedback. I could include it in the paper. So, yeah, so I asked students, okay, what do you think of this uh, bilingual uh, pedagogical, pedagogical material? So for example, uh, supporting text in Japanese, is it useful? The number of margin notes given Japanese, should they be increased? Uh, do you want more keywords translated uh, and so on? So yeah, they, they kind of, as you can see, yeah, they, they strongly agree to, the, to those statements, right? They, they think that it's very helpful to have the uh, 
translation of keywords, explanations of, uh, of uh, important uh, key aspects, key ideas in the textbook. So they, they, yeah, they reacted really, I think, positively to, to this material. And uh, I've not included any information on the, on the exam results, but yeah, they, they, they did quite well, well, yeah, they did quite well. All right, so conclusion, bilingual publishing has, of course, various important applications, for instance, educational textbooks. Focusing more particularly on the demanding English-Japanese scenario, we have reviewed general latex guidelines and techniques to produce a bilingual book. Considering a major, for example, English, and a minor, like Japanese language for the book, the type page layout and customization of page headers, chapter pages, and special pages issues have been addressed. In addition to PDF features, but not included in the talk, this will be in the paper. All right. Thank you for your uh, listening to this. For, thank you for listening to that presentation. And I would be happy to answer any questions if there are. OK, thank you, Antoine, for very, very nice very nicely presented talk. Thank you. Um, there is a question in the chat. Um, there's, okay. Can you access the chat? Yeah, yeah. let me read it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, YouTube. Antoine, since you use the phone spec package and contact ranges, haven't you explored using Noto, which is a typeface with a white support writing system, including Japanese with its uh, kanas and kanjis? Is it the same question? It would be useful and interesting to see a package that includes all these considerations you use in your bilingual books, or at least a template to create them. Yeah, so first, yeah, the Google Noto. Yeah, I, I'm aware of, I am well aware of Google Noto fonts, I think, uh, fonts, you, yeah, you say, uh, yeah, Noto yeah, fonts. fonts. Yeah. yeah, and of course, I, I use Noto in several of my works. Uh, I think not in this textbook, but it's 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 uh, not a problem. I can I can very simply switch to Noto. Um, by the way, I I don't know if some people are aware of the Noto fonts here, but uh, in the CTAN CTAN packages, I noticed that there is a convenient package for simplified Chinese uh, not Noto fonts. So Noto fonts only for simplified Chinese can be easily uh, downloaded with the CTAN package, but not the Japanese font. So I'm not very aware. I'm not don't know very well about how to do this, but uh, it would be interesting to add the Noto fonts for Japanese on CTAN. I think would be interesting. Of course, the English fonts are are already on CTAN for the Noto Noto. Yeah. Uh, but thank you for the. Uh, yeah, feedback. Yeah, no, Noto fonts. I think uh, it's uh, it's interesting. Yeah, just as one comment from myself uh, regarding Noto fonts. Noto fonts were very helpful for me because I remember writing a paper in a conference, and the paper was also using the English and Japanese uh, glyphs, and um, the paper, the tech the text source files had to be provided to the conference, to the conference system, and the system compiled uh, the tech uh, files. But because my paper relied on special fonts, it was uh, it did not go well because the, the, the automatic system was not aware of this. So I, I, I asked the, uh, people there to, I don't know, to set up Noto fonts and it, it went very smoothly thanks to Noto fonts. I, I remember this, but thank you. Yeah. And is there anything else? So is my answer enough? Maybe uh, maybe the people, the, the person who asked the question wants to know more. Okay, is it all right? 